please. It's a delight today to welcome a very special guest here to City of Life, Reverend Dr. Bishop Barbara King. She is the founding pastor of the Hillside International Church Center here in Atlanta, located in Cascade. She has been a television host, featured on Atlanta television for many years with an exciting program sharing the ministry and teaching that is so deep and passionate within her heart and life. As we celebrate African American History Month, truly as we look to those African Americans who have had a major impact in our world, who've touched our world and brought about change, Bishop Bruno certainly is listed in that area. She's brought about the wonderful power of transformation and teaching and inspiration that has inspired people to ministry. The pastors have flown out of the Hillside Church to many communities around, around the United States for the teaching that's offered there. We're delighted to welcome her and her ministry. Now, she's not only a great speaker, but a dynamic author. I'm sure she's going to tell you a little bit more about some of the books that she has available for you to pick up in our lobby following our service today. She has been influential, and I can't tell you how many conferences I've been to, that she's been one of the keynote speakers or a dynamic motivational speaker and part of the conference, lifting up and inspiring people. So it is such a delight and such an honor to welcome her today. Would you give her a wonderful City of Life welcome? As we Saying to us. 
And so I remember the scripture, and I came to Unity. I'm not a religious science person. I studied Unity School Christianity. And one of the reasons I liked it was because they believed in Jesus. And they taught the new meaning of who Jesus was and what he believed in. That, that interested me. But as I have moved along with this thing of peace, I know that all of us in this room <laughs> responsible in some way for being peace and for bringing peace. And we don't often do that, so that we forget. And I remember growing up, I'm a new story, I'm 6'5", so that's, I'm Texan, so all Texans are bigger than that. <laughs> and um, I grew up in a very orthodox Baptist church. And please hold your finger, because I'm, I'm a Baptist church, I may forget the timing. So, <laughs> give, me a, give me a time. But I grew up in a Baptist church very rigid in its approach to Christianity and what God was. And we were told about sinning. Somebody told us that all your sins are forgiven until you pass 12 years of age. And I, I took that on very seriously. <laughs> but I found myself in this teaching, Bible study, everything you could name that brought religion into your life. I found myself still being scared still worrying, still lying, still telling white lies, all the things that we can speak, but I didn't understand that words have power. They didn't teach me that in the Baptist church. But what I have learned is, for many of us, if you come to a traditional church, it gave you a foundation to seek something else. I want you to hear that. Because our church is very traditional, but I began to wonder well, why is it I'm still getting in trouble? Why is it I'm still having problems? Why is it I'm still sick all the time? I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't correlate, I couldn't get it until I was introduced. I spent four years in a sanitarium with a life threatening illness. And during that time, church people came to visit me, they prayed, perhaps, but I still was at that same level of not knowing. My faith said I could get out, but that was another part of me that said, you may just die in this place. And so, I turned on the radio one day. Now you have to remember, I came to, at my age, I came to when segregation was really top of the line. So we had no black people on radio. We didn't, we didn't hear any of our people because the radio, everything was all white and used to be. So I turned on the radio one day, being the church girl that I was, and I heard this minister say, place your hand on the radio. And be healed. Well, not the church I came out. Nobody puts their hands on anything. You know what I mean? You only place your hands on the radio. Come on now. But I decided I would do it. And I placed my hands on the radio. Now I realize now that I've grown and matured in my understanding that that was an act of faith. The radio didn't do a thing. But it was an act of faith on my part to place my hands there. And at that time, I had written to you to school. And I asked them to pray for me. And they sent me what was called the prayer of faith. And they said, Barbara, say this prayer daily. If they give you bad news, say the prayer. If they give you good news, excuse me, say the prayer. Make sure you say it in the prayer. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise. I now am true, patient, kind, and loving to all things I am can do in me through Christ, the truth that he is in me. God is my health. I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all. I know no fear. Since God and love and truth are here, I went like, I'm a college person. Don't tell me about God is my health. I can't be sick. I mean, as sick as they say I can be, never get out of here. But whatever it was about that prayer, I continue to repeat it. When the doctor came to the bar, I'm trying to find, well, don't worry, you'll be here tomorrow. Whatever they said to me, I repeat that prayer. Why am I saying to you? Because in the world that we live in, with all the stuff that's around us, you've got to have a prayer. You've got to have an affirmation. You've got to have something to do you.
So you've got to keep yourself in alignment so that you won't go through the same grief, but you can extend your pressure, extend your concern. So when I got into unity, what did they tell me? Barbara, your words have power. What? What do you mean by words have power? Because there's an energy force. We're in energy. We live in energy. We are energy. And so therefore, you know, and everybody is not trying to Now, the scripture is good. That's why I like you because they did something with the scriptures. They told me about physical and all that. But every word you speak is power. And it does just what you give it to do. Because your thinking and your feeling become that power. And so they taught me, Mom, you can't tell a little white lie. What's a white lie? What about a black lie? What's a white lie? You know, I know all this. <laughs> but it's white lie. But it taught me to be careful about what I was thinking that I felt I had to speak. Now, when you come from tradition into new thought, sometimes you wonder you're in the right place. You know why? Because you don't want to change. You've been so comfortable. You know, when I went to John's church, they didn't have communion, Pastor. No bread? No wine? I mean, what kind of church is this? I went to be baptized. Yeah, I had been submerged. Anybody baptized me when you went down in the water? Where they held you down a while? And then the Father said, the Holy Ghost. They kept me so I was going to be a preacher, but they kept me down. So then I went to baptism. When I joined the church, she had spiritual baptism. Because we learned, listen, get this if you get nothing else, that you are a spiritual being. The Spirit of God in your place when I was in the bathroom, they said God was up here and I was down here. I never got the word to God. I thought God didn't hear me because I was separated. But when I came into the movement and learned that you mean a tent, and I've been taunted by my friends. I've been called long legged lizard, and I've been called Grotty Johnny Green Giant, but I've been called every name you could name by my classmates, by people on the street. You need to tell me that God is in me, and I'm going to take this difference in my life. It made a difference because you begin to realize if the Spirit of God is in me, I'm okay. I've got what I need to be what I need to be. Hallelujah. Barbara, I'm okay. Call your name, not mine. Barbara, I'm okay. 
Say it, Bob. Call your name. I'm okay. Say it loud and clear. Bob, I'm okay. that does 
not make sense. The wars, the people being killed, the children, the women. There's so much going on in this world. You better stand on the truth. That's what stand by me means. Stand on what you believe. Because otherwise, you may not have what you want. Now I'm going to go back to number, this number four. This is three or four. Four. So they have to miss a church in time. Dr. Harper said four and not that one. Anyway. But let me go back for a minute when I ask you about your dreams, because it all ties in. You gotta believe in what God has given you. You gotta believe it. And you gotta step into it. Let me quickly tell you that in my 70s, I was with a tall girl, she got real mom. In my 70s, with no loan from the government, I made a step in faith. When I did, I wanted to talk to to wear beautiful clothes. So when I made the step, it turned out that the gallery mall was being sliced up so they could build that, that center. So they took out a lot of big stores. The people who were left, we didn't have to work on Sundays, didn't have to work on Sundays. We rented a place for $500 a month. I could pay that out of my salary. I, was living in Park Place, and I met a young man who was a designer. He said, I told him, he said, I'm going to do it for you, Dr. King. He designed my whole store. I was traveling a lot. Wherever I went, I would buy something. I was in Brazil, and I bought some coconut pocket books for $2. I told him for $25. <laughs> <laughs> I was That store flourished. I don't really close because when I had another life driven illness, I couldn't keep it over. And I told him, but you know what? I'm starting back again with a Barbara King collection coming out next month. Because I met a lady put in a home network who was proud of tall home was doing something for tall people. Listen, I just want you to hear me. Anything you got in your mind, you can produce. You just did it with this building. Why can't you do it with your life? Speak words of truth that will bless me. 
as I move among those that I'm with, if I can let my light shine. Because when you truly believe in who you are, there's a light that emanates from you. And people can see that light. And that light is so it's a healing light and it heals you. It lets you know that when you keep speaking words of healing, you can be healed. I kept saying that prayer over and over. I still say it today. Whenever I get the news about my health, I go back to the prayer. That doesn't mean you can't trust doctor, but I tell you this one thing. You better pray for me because all the doctors ain't in right. And not all in the right spirit. So pray before you go and let God direct who you should go to. That's important. But a lot of there's a lot of sickness, so-called, call it challenges and opportunities. But let's just bring it down front. There's a lot of sickness in the world. A lot of sickness in our ministries. A lot of people going through, we don't even know they're going through. So we have to keep the idea of healing as well as the idea of money, as well as the idea of relationship, because it all can bring peace. And that's what I want you to get this morning from me. Let that be peace in me so I can be peaceful with everyone else. And when stuff comes your way, don't take it in. Look at it for what it is. And realize, I am a child of God. I'm going to close with this. Won't you just sit back for a moment and relax? Let's just have a healing prayer. I mean, do we have a prayer time? We have, I won't do this if you okay, okay. Let's just have a healing prayer. Because my spirit tells me that there's someone here who's going through an experience and you haven't known what to do. I've lived through two life threatening illnesses and I'm still standing at 85. And I went to my doctor last week and I said, Doc, who knows what he said? You just get no one. I said, Thank you for reminding me. I didn't know I would get no one. I thought I was okay. You have to tell yourself you're okay. Other folk are not going to tell you. Doctor's not going to tell you. But you have to decide that no matter what I'm going through, I will get through it. For just a moment, just recognize that you're in God and God's in you. And if you want to place your hand on the place where you have that challenge, you can do that. And just take a deep breath.
It's already done. And they will be in truth.